now, Brandon Thick Boy Shop. Yo, it is Monday, June 10th. Summer is here, kids. Is there a better time of the year than summer popping? You got freaking summer travel ball, nothing better. The sun's out more, the nights come way later, out the pool, hot dogs, simmering. Oh, love me some summer. It's a good time. It's a good time. What's going on, folks? Uh, it's a good time to be a UFC fan as well. Just an overall fight fan. There's a lot going on. Um, clearly, the biggest news, by far the biggest news, is uh, there's a big fight over the weekend. There was a big fight. You're like, oh, Tyson, Jake Paul? No, 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 not, no, not that one. Oh, Connor Chandler, is he going down? No, 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 not that one, not that one. Logan Paul, Bradley Martin. That's right, Chin. They fought. No, they didn't, did they? Okay. <laughs> I didn't see shit. They fought. You wouldn't see shit. I got my hair to the ground. Oh, okay. So you know something we don't know. Uh, it's kind of out there. I mean, I wasn't even going to talk about it. And then Mike, who's uh, Logan Paul's, uh, shout out to Mike, Logan Paul's uh, co-host on the pod, and his best friend, I think business partner, released something. But th what they released was just the end of it. But um, here's how it goes down. So I get a call last week on Friday. I get home from work, right? We shot a bunch of stuff. I got this giveaway truck going down. It's down to the wire. The giveaway truck will be done this Friday. All that is left is we got to clear the fender walls to clear the, the 39 inch uh, tires on it. And um, I have to replace the fuel pump because this thing's making a lot more power than we thought. Um, and then Thursday, I'm taking an MPE for side exhaust and then friday we're going to shoot the content we got the merch we got the website so this bad boy's going to launch by mid-july cannot wait so i'm doing with all that all right, i have a, a few missed calls from mr bradley martin very close friend of mine and uh i get home with the kids i'm like what's up man he goes uh just gotta just gotta call or facetime from logan paul he wants to fight i was like oh cool you know that's what he wanted like he wanted I, I was like, yo, when is it? Like, wh where's it at? Vegas? What are we talking about? He goes, no, remember that tweet where I, where I was like, yo, man, uh, forget the clout, forget the cameras, I'll fight you outside of my gym. And Logan Paul's like, cool. Yeah, let's do it. Which, in today's society, I know people are like this, they're animals, this is how it works, blah, blah. Kudos to both of them. It's very rare where there's a beef like this where someone talks trash, another person talks trash, and they actually fight. They actually fight. So for Logan Paul, everyone's like, oh, fake fighter, whatever you want to call him. For the, and think much, dude's set. Like, he never has to work again in his life. For him to be like, yeah, I'll, I'll fight a 206-pound Bradley Martin, but no cameras. What? I was like, oh, these boys are gangster. These boys are, they're really about that life. So uh, Brad calls me. He's like, yeah, he's down. I'm like, oh, shit. And he's like, I just have to sign waivers. Like, they can't hurt, sue each other, you know, all that stuff. No cameras. And he's like, uh, you know, what do you think? You know, can you help me? I was like, well, when is it? He's like, it's tomorrow at 11. I'm like, okay, well, it's 5 p.m. So there's not going to be a whole lot of technique going on. So I was just, I went, drove over his house and uh, was just like, it's not, I, there's there's the sport of fighting which is you know like ufc one championship so that's the sport and then there's street fighting this is a street fight they're co two completely different things and also i think the average street fight is about 15 seconds long so you're talking about two different things but there's some tips or maybe something i try and help them out but you, you know you're not working with a whole lot of time um so i just gave him some tips mental things uh, that i thought would help um as far as do i know how it went yeah i do i do i talked to bradley right after uh he asked me to go i didn't want to be there i don't want to be involved in it you know i, I love logan too so I, I just didn't want to be involved in it but um you know there, there's things online like oh bradley got ko'd nobody got ko'd nobody got ko'd there's respect that's their story to tell but uh overall i, I just think it's gangster 
that these two savages agreed to sort their problems out like this and this is how it always goes no you know nobody got seriously hurt none of that stuff they did it in a gym but um at the end of it there's just respect there so so then you move there's no there's nothing else to do like it's over that you guys sell the problem as two dudes the you know the there's respect there and then it's over you know and then the the media run with it and say what they want the media the online you know all that stuff but uh, that that's over. You know how much easier things would be if people just did. And I, I'm not condoning fighting nonstop on the street. They did it in a closed control environment. Obviously, they're not going to kill each other. No one's going to hit their head and die. None of that stuff. But um, you know how much easier it would be if just things were solved that way. No guns, no knives, respect. Not on camera. Not doing it for the views. I respect it, man. I respect it. And for, dude, my my view on Logan, I've always had respect for him. my view on Logan changed. That, I mean, how much is uh, Prime worth? How how much does he make in the WWE? And for him still to be like, what do you want to do? Oh, you want to fight? Okay, yeah, yeah. Where do you want to do it at? He's like out front of the gym. Cool man, just sign this waiver so you don't sue me, and uh, I'll come up there. Brad said he rolled up, had a mouthpiece in. Handed Brad a mouthpiece. Was like, hey, man, you want a mouthpiece? And Brad's like, uh, it was like one of the boil and bite ones. And he's like, nah, I don't have time to form it. Let's do no mouthpiece. And Logan's like, all right, cool, man. Do you want to like, do you want to do like raps or anything? And Brad's like, nah, just like old school. Like it wasn't like this hostile, like, oh, I heard you say this. No, it's very like formal, like old school, like a straight up duel, you know? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, dude, it's so unheard of. It's so wild to me. So I got so much respect for them. And also for Logan, like, you know, he has a, a more uh, set foundation, wrestled in uh, high school. I, he's a pretty damn good high school wrestler. Kids athletic as shit, right? Uh, he's doing the backflips at WWE. Obviously trained in boxing, when, getting ready for Floyd Mayweather and the KSI. So he definitely has more of a background when it comes to fighting. You know, he's definitely had more experience. Bradley, not so much. So, you know, it was a tall order for Bradley, even though he's bigger. And But even though, like, just think about, like, how much does uh, Logan Paul weigh? Maybe, maybe the, he, you know, he's pretty jacked there. Maybe 220? This says 205. Let's, let's give him 215 because he's pretty jacked. So let's say 215, not cutting, not getting ready for a show. So let's say 215. Mm -hmm. You're just going to roll up to a dude's gym who's 260 pounds, maybe heavier? And shredded two six to just show up, and people are always oh, so fake. I'm I'm telling you, this was not, not fake. How can you not respect that? How can you not respect that? That's wild. Respect. Nobody got hurt. Beef is over. They have respect. Hopefully, it leads to another thing. Hopefully, Brad can train for an actual fight, and Logan's down to do that. You know, pretty cool though, man. You don't see that this day and age. You just don't see that. You keep the, everybody's loud online, right? Everybody, everybody's so tough online. Everyone talks the talk. Very few walk the walk. Whatever your issues is with Logan, whatever your issues is with Bradley, you got to respect it. A lot of people, oh, this is so meathead. That's because you can't fight. Or you'd never do it. Because I don't care who you are. I don't care if you have all the skills in the world, if you're a former world champion, if the dude across the street that works at Ticketmaster of the Hell, they're like, hey, you got to fight him tomorrow at 11. Even though I do have the skills to probably beat him, the nerve's still going to be there. You never, it's a fight, especially street fight. You don't know what the hell's going to happen. My only thing I said to Bradley, I said, you're a big dude, man. You're a big, I know you guys signed waivers. You're a big dude. You're very strong. If you get him down, you have to show mercy. You can't, you can't go balls to the wall, throwing elbows, bashing his face in. You got to show restraint and don't, don't prove all the haters and, the, oh, he's just a meathead. No, no, no. Show restraint because you got to respect Logan even giving you this opportunity or even down to do, do, do this fight. The way you show respect is if this goes like you want to and you take him down and get on top of him, we don't need Khabib elbows, Tony Ferguson elbows. No, no, no. What are you doing? No, no, we're not trying to hurt him. He's trying to win the damn thing. 
Maybe pop them once and then show restraint. Say, you good? And then you guys stand up and go about your business. That's gangster. It's not gangster bashing the guy's face, face in when he can or any of that stuff. That's not cool. That's not what this is about. And they both showed restraint. I'm not, again, it's not my story. To take, do I know exactly how it went down? I do. It's not my story. I would never do that to them. That's their shit. Wild. Wild, dude. It's, it's wild to me that Logan Paul's about that life that he just was like, he woke up, he woke up, whatever, on that Friday and was like, someone was like, hey, you see Bradley's tweets? So he's down to fight, you know, cameras in front of his gym. And he has a whole team. Like, you're talking about a straight business. And they're like, what do you want to do today? He's like, I'm down to drive up to zoo culture and fight Bradley. And like, whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell are you talking about? He's like, yeah. Now I'm just going to show up with a mouthpiece and well, I don't need the cameras. Let's just go do it. <laughs> what? That's pretty wild, man. That's pretty wild. How many would do that? How many people do you know would actually do that? Now, maybe you have nothing to lose and, you know, and it's whatever. And you're like, oh, I'm down to do that. But now think about it. He's the face of damn near a billion dollar business. This is like Mark Cuban calling out RFK or some shit. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to pull up, bro, and fight. I'm going to show up with a mouthpiece and offer you a mouthpiece and then show respect after. Dude, so old school. It's a duel, bro. Wild. Wild. So wild. Respect to both of them. Respect to both of them for even doing it. I think that's why I said to Brad and Logan, I don't care how it ends. I don't care for you guys just having the balls to do this is very rare. Very rare. Nobody got hurt. Nobody got knocked out. No bones were broken. You know? So maybe your ego took a hit. Both jacked. I'll be honest, too. In, when I saw that, Logan's a lot bigger than I thought. He's big. Yeah. Because Bradley's gigantic. Bradley's two six Bradley's bigger than I am. Bradley's two sixty. And I think, you know, the, a lot of Logan haters out there, yeah, how can you not respect this? Even Bradley, too. Win, lose, or draw. How can you not respect this? Wild. Thank God they didn't do it on the street. And that's what's good. Logan won doing the goddamn street. Bro. How savage is that? You know how easily you can get hurt on the street? So Bradley shut his gym down during peak hours to do this and just put a sign on the door that said, under construction. <laughs> okay. Also, if you do it outside, there's street cameras, right? So who knows? Someone calls the cops, then you're dealing with different sort of problems. I, I I didn't think these boys were about that life. I just thought it was, you know, just, you know, Twitter, something cool to talk about. Nah, man. Logan woke up that morning and wanted to smoke. I think the kids online are saying, catch a fade. Catch a fade. I don't like that. Pretty wild, though. You're just learning about it now, Hunchin. Yeah. Wild, right? I don't need to see the video. There's no, well, there, there's, there's no video. <laughs> I don't say, I'm saying like, yeah. You know, I'm, never mind. Oh no, I know you're skeptical, and I can see why people are skeptical. Chin up, <laughs> but straight I, up. I, you, I would, I would tell you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm. When I tell you, I'm telling you, it went down. For a fact, I know for a fact. I've seen some stuff. For a fact, yeah. Wild. Respect to those men. Yeah, so that was a big fight over the weekend. <laughs> Take a little break, kids, from chatting all things fighting. Because, boy, we are getting close to crowning the Boston Celtics, the NBA champ. They're up 2-0. I was rooting for Dallas, but Boston getting Boston. They're built to take the title this year. So if you want to get in on the action, make money, bet on the Boston Celtics, do it with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. With the same game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, so much more. Don't miss out on NBA's postseasons winding on down. And if you're new 
to DraftKings, you got to check out this. New customers get you five bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Bet on your Boston Celtics and use the code SHOB Show, S C H A U B Show. That's code SHOB Show for new customers to get 150 in bonus bets when you bet just five buckaroos. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or in West Virginia, visit www.1800Gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.co slash bball for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. And it's just the the the, the MMA gods, the fight gods have been good to us. Because then, because I was shooting uh, some car content with Rampage. He has an old school um, Continental. And I met him at Jack's uh, studio owned by Bear out up there. And um, I was doing podcasts with them. I shot our show, and then it, that whole thing down in Newport. I mean, it's a it's a vibe. Jackson, yeah, Jackson, yeah. Because when I went there, you had Cheetos there. Mm. They just got done training. Luke Rockhold's there. Um, you got Rampage is there. You got the whole squad. It's just a whole thing, dude. And then uh, I jumped on their podcast. I don't know when they release them. It was all about Luke Rockhold fighting Strickland. And they kept asking, "What do you think? What do you think?" I said, um, love Luke, but also the logistics of it. Like you guys keep asking me. I said, I'm not, I'm not going to give my opinion because it's never happening. I know it's fun to talk about and it gets the clicks and, I, and that's what they do. And Bear's great at that. And what he's doing down there is fantastic. But when it comes to that stuff, I live in the world of logistics where it just doesn't make – the UFC would never do that. I know Luke wants the fight and might get him back to the UFC, but it, it's – just as a business, like why would the UFC risk their number one guy to fight Luke, who's out of the UFC, who's coming off a loss in the UFC and was released, and they're going to risk that to bring Luke back to fight their number one contender? Like the logistics, it just doesn't add up, you know? Didn't add up. And again, I love Luke, but you know, Strickland's a fucking beast. I kept, I was like, dude, his cardio is really good, you know best defense on the in the game it's like this ain't an easy fight bro well, like i am not I, i'm not entertaining that again love luke but the, let's keep it real like strickland's a motherfucker you know and he's down strickland again very logan polish i never thought i'd com- compare those two logan there strickland was like dude forget a fight like come to extreme couture's i'll beat you up here come down to new like whatever you want to do dude I'll, I'll spar you see how it goes gangster gangster yeah they're doing the whole thing there man doing the damn thing i remember since we started doing fight companion with rampage you always tell him like dude you should do a podcast even like after the, i told the him on show. the show yeah like you could just do a podcast. i don't know if i said it on the show but uh you did it after the show as well so yeah i always yeah, do yeah. it but i but on the on when i was on the jackson podcast i said dude i always told you mm-hmm. like at before every show after a show you need to have your own podcast I mean, podcasting for a hot second, you'd be so good at this. You just need a co-pilot, and he has one in Bear, and mm-hmm. they're great together. Yeah. And they're, they're crushing it, man. Crushing it. Love Rampage. One of my favorite people. So Such cool. a good dude. So entertaining. Car was dope, too. I saw it. Yeah, super dope. Those, that's one of my favorites, too, Lincolns. Yeah. His is sick. And he let me drive. He said, why don't you drive? I was like, you sure? Because I'd never let somebody drive my car. <laughs> Uh, he was like, why don't you drive? I was like, all right. So just me and him cruising down, you know, cruising. It was fun, man. It was a good time. Uh, there's some fights this weekend. Obviously, the biggest thing everybody's talking about is the uh, Imamov and Jared Cannonier fight. That was an early stoppage. Um, and in my group chat with some people that know the fight game, besides Brian Callen, um, you know, Brian was like, I think it's good they stopped it early. They, we need more of this. Huh? No. Yeah. And I, it, it, here's my issue with all that is like we live in a society right now where you're seeing things that are dangerous, straight up. Fighting's dangerous. Boxing's dangerous. 
football's dangerous. You know, like the, these things are dangerous. We live in a society now where we're trying to soften those things. We're trying to make them so safe that it's taken away from the game, and it's not good. You look at what the NFL's doing. You know, we can't touch a guy anymore. The cornerbacks can't even play man-to-man. They can't get their hands on them. It's just a different game. You can't touch the quarterback. You know, the receiver, you can't. It's just softening the game, trying to make it, quote-unquote, safe. And when it comes to MMA, I, I hate this shit, and I, I don't. I don't like any of it. We're like, ah, you know, if a fighter's losing, it's better to live to fight another day. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know how many fighters have won that are down on the cards? Like, mm-hmm. that's fighting. Fighting's not just winning and dominating and finishing, guys. Fighting's also when you're down on the scorecards and there's one minute left in the round and you find the will in a way to win that fight. That's fighting. That's why it's called a fight. Um, so this... This concept of, ah, stop it. If the guy's down, let's just stop it early. It's like, dude, that's wild. A, that's not fighting. B, if you feel that way, you probably shouldn't be a fan of the UFC. And people go, well, they do it in boxing. That's your argument? I, that's what that's, people tell me that's all the time. Brian tell me this all the time. Ah, dude, look at boxing. They stop it early. Mm. You know that there's, on average, I think eight to 10 deaths a year in boxing around the globe. You know, there's never been one in the UFC. And you guys want to dole it down, make it say it like this isn't this isn't the tree to bark up. This this isn't don't try and soften mixed martial arts like this ain't dude. This ain't it. This ain't it. Do, go do that somewhere else. Go, they've done it in the NBA, right? They've done it in the NFL. Like, UFC ain't the, that's not the space to do it. It's just not, it's just not the way to go. Uh, so, with the Jared Cannonier one, it's like, yeah, it's upsetting, man. Here, here's what people don't realize, too, when, like, good thing they stopped, though, you could take more damage. Here's what happens when you stop a fight early at Jared Cannonier's level. What was he ranked? Number four? And Imava was ranked, I think, below 10. Were they at there? Yeah, four. Four and... Uh, He's seven. Seven. That's right now. So here's what happens. So since Jared Cannonier, who was having some success early on, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like he was getting completely washed in this. He was having some success. You can't say he was outmatched, out-talented. That's not, that's not true in this scenario. So when you're ranked number four and you're Jared Cannonier, and you lose to number seven. And Jared Cannonier has had a shot at Strickland, who he beat. He that's the thing you're dealing with the guy who beat Sean Strickland. So he beat Strickland. He's had a shot at Izzy. He's had a shot at all the big dogs. And he hasn't won those. And he's trying to get over that hump. And you lose to number seven. Well, now he's gonna go all the way down to probably seven or eight. And the road to get back with at his age and his miles is damn near impossible. So it completely changed the trajectory of his entire career. Not to mention he gets half of his pay. Half. Because you want to protect him and stop it early in a competitive fight. Not to mention his endorsements outside of the octagon and in the octagon, maybe it's Monster, whatever it is, or whatever the crypto bullshit they got going on there on their shorts. So those... And his sponsors outside, when you lose a fight and you get outside the top five, now, A, you're either losing those sponsors. So financially, you're taking a massive hit. So you're either losing those sponsors or those sponsors are downgrading how much they pay you a month. So now you're talking about his overall salary, not to mention the half of your pay you lost because the ref decided to stop it early, not to mention the difficult path you're going to have just to get back to the top seven. It's a complete nightmare. So this butterfly effect, uh, stop it early. He's a fucking fighter. What are you talking about? Jared, I guarantee you, if you ask him and his team, did not want that fight to stop early because the repercussions are so devastating at that level. Again, you're not paying his bills. You're not his family. You're not covering his mortgage. You're not feeding his kids, paying for school, paying car payments. All that's affected. 
But let's keep them safe. Stop it early. The fuck out of here. No one thinks of that stuff. Everything's affected when you lose a fight. Everything. Now, I'm not talking about Strickland. It, granted, it affects him financially for a second. But when you're number one and you're fighting for a championship, you lose and you win the next one. You're still in the atmosphere where you're one away and you're still fighting top three, top four, top five guys. But when you're number four, go to his record, Jim. When you're number four, you lose number seven. Go it's to Cannoneers or Strickland? Cannoneers. And let me see his age. Go up. He's 40. 40. Two fight win streak. He went over Strickland, too. Oh, let, let, hold on. Let's go over this man's wins, too. So he beat David Branch, who was a beast back in the day, if you remember. Black belt, Enzo Black belt. He beat Anderson Silva. Ever heard of him? He beat Jack Hermanson. No punk performance of the night. Then he lost. A, now, notice there's, there's a theme here with uh, Kananir. He lost to Robert Whitaker, who's, man, top one or two for a long-ass time at middleweight. So he lost him via decision. He beats Kelvin Gaslam. He beats Derek Brunson. Then he gets to fight for the championship of the UFC middleweight. He loses to Izzy. You know, it was decision, not the most entertaining fight, but he, lo he, he lost that one. Then he fights a man named Sean Strickland after losing to Izzy and beat Sean Strickland. Beat Sean Strickland. It's a pretty good notch on your, on your belt. Then he beats Marvin Vittori in fight of the night. Not to mention one, two, three, four, five, five main, main events. So he, so he loses to Izzy for a championship, beats Sean Strickland, beats Marvin Vittori, He's ranked number four. He's on the cusp of getting back to that. And he fights the number seven guy as another main event, his fifth main event. And you stop it early. Not to mention he's 40. The butterfly effect of Jason Herzog, who I think is one of the best referees. Dude, and those people that are on board with this, you completely fuck him. I can't emphasize enough. You completely utterly fuck this kid over grown man at four <laughs> yeah yeah let's take a little break man because father's day is coming up it is next weekend and guess what give the gift that keeps on giving we're talking about a knife give them a knife dude we're talking about a monthly knife club that's right this is the ultimate subscription service for knife enthusiasts and outdoor adventurers me and Chin are headed to Alaska we could use some knives Chin to slice these fish who knows defend ourselves against a grizzly bear but you got to get the monthly knife club. You receive name brand knives delivered straight to your doorstep every single month. Choose from the standalone knife plans or the high-end knives, outdoor and survival gear box plans. Discover a variety of knives from renowned makers such as Kaiser, QSP, Hogue, Real Steel, Kershaw, Cricket, Gerber. All right, they have so much more and exciting news here. The Monthly Knife Club now offers name brand automatic knife subscription plans featuring Haug and Six Hour, Gerber, Kershaw, and many more. They got it all, man. It's the perfect gift alert. Their knife and outdoor gear and survival boxes are ideal for that dad that just won't stop loving. Hard to buy for a person. We got you, man. Any outdoor survival enthusiast, especially, like I told you, Father's Day is right around the corner. Use the code SHOB at Monthly Knife club.com for 10 percent off your first month that's code shop s-c-h-a-b at monthly knife club.com for 10 percent off your first month so if you're ready to to elevate your knife collection and outdoor gear join the monthly knife club today experience the thrill of receiving a knife right at your doorstep oj's like what uh remember use the code shop to save 10 percent off your first month Jason Herzog said, I get it. I know what I was seeing in the moment, but I've got enough feedback. Tell me I need to reevaluate. So I will. Boom. Amazing statement that he did. Sucks that it happened, but that's a great statement. A great shout out, Jason Herzog. That's that exactly how you deal with it. Again, it fucks Cannon. Yeah. You can say sorry, but you got to let, especially the main event, you've got to let a guy at 40 who's been in the highest level fights in the middleweight division, has fought for championships, has beat champions, has fought everybody, and won some, lost some. You've got to let that guy go out on a shield. You have got to, especially at this level. 
Now, if it's if it's a er, like a prelim, like the kid has one fight in the UFC and taking some damage, like this kid's young man. Like, like I get stopping that. You're talking about a 40 year old vet who's ranked number four, who has one last hurrah to get to that championship, and you rob them of that. Wow, oh, man, mistakes happen, but boy, this was a big one. This is a big one. Now you got to hope that the UFC recognizes this that was stopped early, and they they and they still give Cannonier some leeway here, yeah, potential rematch too. It sucks, but I mean, it's very rare they do rematches. Very rare. They're just going to move on, which is all good. Yeah. Like with Raul Ro- uh, Rosa Jr. Mm-hmm. Was he nineteen? He, he's, he's nineteen. Yeah. You don't even have to check, Jen. Right. Just so he's 19. So if that kid's taking a lot of punishment, he's 19. That one, all right. If you want to err on the side of caution, I get it. It's not the main event, I get it. 40? With the legacy of fights he's been in, main event over five times? The fuck are you doing, dude? Know who's in the octagon. It's the main event, dude. You ne- As a referee, your number one job is not to be the the story after the fight. That's the worst. Whether it's in boxing, UFC, your number one job is not to be the story. Get the hell out the way. That's a bummer. Dominic Reyes, woof, he needed this win. Yeah. Huge fan, uh, Dustin Jacoby. But that, yeah, he got a little reckless there, and Dominic Reyes just did his thing. You almost forgot. Raul Rosa Jr., good rear naked choke. Still has a ways to go, you know? Still has a ways to go. Savage, though. That Bruno Fiera, my God, that spinning back elbow. Well, God, two God two, two. my God, that landed. It was a great fight night, dude. It was a great fight night. This There's one they have on Friday, or this one they have on Saturday. That's okay. UFC fight night on Saturday? Oh, <laughs> come on, man. Come on, bro. But again, it's it's sandwiched because again the UFC and I get it, mm-hmm. I get it. They're like, shut your trap, because next Saturday is the big boy in Saudi Arabia, June twenty second, which we are doing a live uh, fight campaign on JRE. I think it's me, Callan, Joey Diaz, and Rogan. So the UFC is going, be cool, man, because next two weeks are hot. And I get, I do no complaints here. I get it. That fight night, terrible, though. That fight night, horrendous. That fight night, fucking dude. You're not a fan of... <laughs> I'll watch it, though. I'll yeah. watch it. You know, i watch them all. That fight night, horrendous, right? The main event, they are good fighters, though. I will say that, but, I mean, just it's just... Very good fighters. Yeah. And, and, you know, good fight. But, yeah. It's the ones you never think are going to be good. They could usually, you know, you never know. That's My right. foot f- fell asleep. That's all good. One championship had a great fight. Yeah. Great fight. You watched it, Chin. We both watched yeah. it. Do you think uh, uh, Homeboy won? Talon Chai, no. And even even he knows he didn't win. The crowd knew he didn't win, so it, it kind of sucked for I think he both. knows he didn't, because even yeah. the, in the, in the ring, he was like, all right, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah, exactly. Rod Tang missed weight. So it was a catch weight, yep. Yep. Uh, Mikey, dude. That boy is... <laughs> He's I, I would say fueled by pizza, but that boy is fueled by anger that night. Mm-hmm. He was cussing and shaking. Damn, Mikey. Someone give him pizza quick. And our boy Cade Rutolo, first fight, first MMA fight, looked good. And then they annou- I assume they announced Mikey and Cade Rutolo is the next jiu-jitsu match. That's Mikey's mm-hmm. next foe. That's a great one. Cade a lot bigger. And then Adrian Lee... Got his first win, Angela Lee's uh, little brother. Yep. Good for him, man. That was a fun card overall, though. Super fun. Just that main event. You're like, ah, oh, come on, man. Rod Tang missing weight. I'm like, what are we doing, son? Let's take a look real quick at uh, this is a side of Mike. I don't think anyone's ever seen before. So it's just a real quick clip. I like it. <laughs> Talk that shit, Mikey. You know, Gabriel, like three or four years ago. And I lost this match, right? So this match was to show everyone that when you have an obstacle, you f- go to do it, 
and you overcome it. My opponent talked a lot of about me for about four years. I respect him so much, but for four years, he commented on every freaking post I did. I'm not trying to curse. Uh, like, talking I just cursed again. <laughs> then he did something very personal to me. And when he did this personal involving family, that's when I got angry. But everyone talking you couldn't beat him. There's no way. He's a division heavier than you. I just submitted him easy as <laughs> it's so different talk that shit mikey i like this side of mikey i like it because it's not oh like a it's authentic he's really upset mm -hmm. he also destroyed his calf you know it's like yeah he's a division up he also beat the shit out of him so there's a lot of anger there i like it because it's not a wwe promo like this is oh, yeah. mikey's true feelings he's, he's really upset going yeah. into this fight and when I talked to him, you could tell like it was super personal. So I, I like that this is authentic. Whether you know the cussing, whatever, I don't care. But some people will. But I think like this is authentic, Mikey. So it's like, dude, talk that shit, son. And I don't think you're gonna see this. I guarantee you don't see this going to the Cade Rutolo match. No, they both have respect. Oh, ton there's, of respect, yeah. Yeah, there's not there's not a lot, a lot of animosity. It's just two competitors going at it. I enjoy that too. But here, talk that shit, Mikey. <laughs> Break that knee off. But that also, was a lot longer too. Oh yeah, he yeah. just kept going. He on, kept going, pacing around like pissed yeah, off. Hell yeah, talk yeah. that shit, dog. <laughs> Got that pep talk from Zuckerberg. Went went ham on him. I'm not mad at it. I like that side because it, because it's authentic. He was really bothered, really upset. So when you have a slice of pizza, <laughs> which is out by the way. Oh yeah, grab a slice of Mikey's out. Thick boy, you It's a fun one. He's the best. So. uh Casey put this in our group chat that the UFC 303 promo came out with Connor and Chandler. I told yo ass our boy is fighting. At the end of the day, he's a fighter's fighter. And also, a lot of people, you're just not used to the Connor mayhem. You know, oh my God, he's pulling out. He's not doing this. Shut up. You haven't been around long enough to talk that shit, man. This is Connor, baby. It's all part of the game. Yeah, but it was worrisome once the UFC starts like privatizing the the videos of him fighting Nate that they had just posted, and like once the UFC starts to pull promotion, you're like, okay, it's it, it's over. So once they do a 180 and start doing the promotion again, you're like, we're back. Not me, baby. Because <laughs> I I said on the Jackson podcast, like, is is Connor fighting? And I said, I guarantee he fights. How do you know? I, I dude, come on, man, guarantee he fights. In the day, he's a fighter's fighter. He's fought hurt before. He always shows up. It, his leg would have to fall off in order for him to pull out of a main event. A sold-out main event? Come on. It's Connor. Yeah. Then, my, then I, I got a dude uh, who's at the airport. He ran into Chandler, and he's like, the fight on Chandler. I'm like, yep, I'm headed back to camp right now. Cha-ching. We back, baby. June's getting tasty. Yeah. It still makes you wonder why they canceled the Dublin um, press conference, but I guess it's irrelevant. Who cares? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Dude's fighting. Yeah. I don't need a press conference to build this up. And Connor, Connor probably feels the same way. He's like, oh, dude, how much promo do I need to do? I put out one sound clip to get more views than this press conference. Check this out. Connor being Connor, man, playing some mind games. Chandler's like, oh, is it happening? You know? It's great. Everyone's like, oh, he's out drinking, all this stuff. I'm like, that's Connor, baby. We ready to go. Y'all just new to the game. You knew this notorious game. Not me. Oh, he ready to go. I see him out there fucking shaking and slapping his dick on the dance floor drinking. I'm like, my boy ready. Oh, he ready. Did you see that clip? Uh, he was doing an interview or something and like had the Forge Irish out, but he was trying like not to drink it. And he's like, <laughs> it's like tough. smelling it. It's tough. Fighting those demons. Yeah, my boy ready. <laughs> Locked in. That's Dialed in. He's dialed in. Absolutely dialed in. Absolutely dialed in. That guy. But that's a great advertisement for his stout, too, because it was like, oh, I just want to drink yeah. it so bad, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Now, he could drink that and then take some safety shot. He'd be ready to go. There you go. True. We need to send him a, a nice four-pack of safety shot. It won't be a bad partnership. Definitely. Um, this What's is, this? It's a bummer, but Ryan Garcia was arrested, and this time for felony, or for felony vandalism, and then he was booked into a hospital and here's a statement from hold on one sec 
Here's a statement from the actual Beverly Hills Police Department. So on June 8th at 5.15, all right, it's not late in the night, responded to Waldorf hysteria, intoxicated person calling for service. Um, during the investigation, the intoxicated, the drunk person was identified as Ryan Garcia. Upon obtaining statements from the hotel management, determined that Mr. Garcia was registered guest of the hotel, had caused damage to a guest room in the hallway of the hotel. Can't have that. Hotel management requested the arrest of Mr. Garcia for property damage. Okay. Yeah, and then sent for medical care. What was the medical care? Did he like hurt his hand? I think mental. So I think even his uh, his manager, someone on his team said that something happened where his mother just recently felt, you know, something's happening with their health. She's and cancer. Then he's, okay, yeah, so that's that's when he's going through like all this crap. It's tough. He's a young kid, ton of money, ton of fame, a lot of hate, you know? It's tough. It's tough for a young man. Are they like locking them up in like an insane asylum or what are they doing here? That could be like kind of just a play like from a legal standpoint, if if you send them to a mental medical facility that gives you some uh, somewhat of an out like in, in the legal way. So it could be like he may not be losing his mind, but from a legal standpoint, if you do that right after an arrest, it gives you more of a case. Correct. Mm -hmm. Let's take a little break because everybody remembers that one special card as a kid that got them into collecting. For me, it was a Shaquille O'Neal rookie card. And in that same pack, I got Christian Leitner. But I was such a good brother. My brother got nothing. He was crying. So I gave him Shaq and I kept the Christian Leitner. My God, what a disaster. I wish I could get that Shaquille O'Neal back. Oh, my God. Collecting has come a long way since then. You're talking about I, this. I was a 90s kid and I love me some cards man but now there's a new way to buy sell trade and rip packs called arena club arena club has taken repacks to another level introducing the slap packs from arena club.com the only repack that provides real value complete view of all possible cards and clear hit rates for each one so whether you're buying selling trading or displaying arena club is all in one trading card platform you have got to check it out no more guessing get what you want no more shipping delays or ca cards lost in transit. It's a weird world out there. Arena Club uses blockchain technology to deliver your card immediately. Buy with confidence knowing every card on Arena Club is guaranteed authentic. Grading, the Arena Club grading process combine, combines AI and human grading. It's accurate, fast, transparent with full grade rash, rationale provide and explanation of how your card was scored. Trading, cool. Make offers, send trades, interact with friends. Create your own personal showroom and start building your collection today. So if you're a card person, dude, this is the thing for you. Right now, you get 10% off your first purchase by going to arenaclub.com slash shop. That's arenaclub.com slash shop for 10% off your first purchase. What else you got, dog? All right, next one is the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson boxing match uh, getting a new date. So it's November 15th. AT&T Stadium. I'm I'm glad it's still going on for everybody's sake. Because remember, there's there's other big names on the card. You know, the co-main event with the female fight. Um, okay. You know, it's just not a good look when your opponent has to pull out due to ulcers. You know, it's like he's already old, and that so that's the knock on this fight, and he's pulling out. You know, the weird thing though is the odds changed. So that's what the odds are now. Before Mike Tyson was a plus three hundred, but after this new date switch. Because they're supposed to fight in July. This, that's a, plenty of time off now. Mm -hmm. But since the new date switch, he's a plus 130 or 185. I don't trust any of this stuff. Like, I think everybody's in, in on the gig. I, you know, I, I don't know what's going on there. They think by giving Tyson more time, it's better for him. I I don't know. <laughs> At least to heal the ulcers possible? I yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, it's hard to predict that fight. I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh you used to work with a guy, Mike Coppinger, right? I remember you did a, some sort of yeah, like he's broadcast great. on him. He's like the boxing expert for ESPN. He, he's like mega mind when it comes yeah. to boxing. Mm -hmm. No motherfucker knows boxing. He was uh, like running circles around. I'm like, yeah, I'm just here to talk Connor Floyd, dude. Oh, the, during that time, that was yeah. awesome time. He's great, though. So he uh, he did a report saying that Usyk versus Fury generated over or, yeah over 1.5 million pay-per-view buys, even though that there was like, what, 100? Ooh, doggy. Remember, there's a ton of streams and like, yeah, a lot of it was stolen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So that's 1.5, including the stolen views. No, without 
That's why. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. so that that mean it would have been massive. Boy, that has to be right up. And there it's for, already massive. Yeah, yeah. That's big, boy. Makes sense though. Makes sense. Good for them, man. There's also no way to confirm this. <laughs> you know, but M- Mike knows his shit. Yeah, he's legit. Mike's the dude. best. Yeah, yeah. he's legit as hell. But the numbers come from Saudi Arabia. Do we trust that? I hope it's true. I love it when those boys get paid and people watch. Yeah. Nothing better. And if it's coming from Mike, pretty good source. Uh, this is really just a quick one. Yuri Proshka says he signed a contract for his next fight. And most people, it should be the rematch with Alex. Yeah. That'd be great. All right. Oh, this is pretty cool. I think so. I haven't heard from Roger Huerta in a while, but uh, he's going to be fighting at the PFL Glasgow on September 28th. How old is he? He used to train with us in Denver. Let me show you. Dude, his... people don't realize. Ooh, okay, lost let's punch. see his um, age first. 41. Mm. That's up there, mm-hmm. especially for that weight class. And he had like a really bad road near the end. He's lost. Um, he's lost four out of his last. Wait, he's lost six out of his last eight. Oh, wow. There's a, okay, he keeps going. Well, that's tough. But then yep. he was on a crazy. Oh, bud. Yeah. He, at, it, he was training with us at like the height of his career. Dude, mm-hmm. he was super famous. He was dating the girl from, uh, uh, what's that show called? Ashton Kutcher. Remember oh, yeah, yeah. I know that 70s show? Right you know the redhead? Yeah. yeah. That was his girlfriend. He's on cover of Sports Illustrated. He had the fight with Kenny Florian. Like, that's when he was training with us. And you're like, oh, my God. I was like, oh, that's Tom Cruise. Because at that time, there was the front of Sports Illustrated, he was like massive, man. Remember, that's before like ESPN, all the shit now where that's common. But I remember just looking at him like, this is wild, man. Good guy, too, right? Great guy. Yeah. Yeah, super dope. He like he did a street fight to protect some girl that. Yeah, some dude hit a girl and he knocked out that big Texas guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, Roger's a badass. I don't like seeing all these losses and I hope, hopefully, he's doing all right. He's such a good dude. Savage, too. Hopefully, he wins this one coming up. All right, so UFC is doing a new series on Roku. It's Have you like watched? I've seen some of the clips. I've just seen the clips, but they're pretty good. They're good. Yeah. But what? <laughs> Go ahead. What were you going to say? This one? They're good. Remember, they control all the narrative. Exactly. So, and they also know they're on camera. But it's good to see some of the stuff. This is my thing to you guys. So I saw this clip, and I'm like, why do they need to do this? Because it's so ob- – oh, well, it's fairly obvious. But I'll just play. This is when John Jones, they're letting him know that – hold on. This is John Jones letting him know how he tore his pack. He's showing the video of him trading, tearing his pack. This shot right here is what bothers me. So that shot was shot in post. Yeah, I mean, why do they need to do that? It's so silly. It's not a huge deal, but you could just show the thing, you know, instead of like pretending he's holding this thing. Yeah. It was just weird. You could tell because his fingers are different. It's It's weird. But I mean, the series so far, that's as far as the clips, <laughs> that's your issue with continuity it always bothers me. Yeah, if it's, they could have just showed it at the bottom and left exactly. it there and put it in post. It's, yeah, they got a different hand to hold it there. But also, that's just for continuity. And <laughs> I don't know. It just looks lame to me. But it's not a huge. That's a problem. white guy's hand. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's Shane Carwin's hand, just this yeah. giant mitt, just holding this tiny little tablet. completely different area yeah. too. But uh, the series is cool. They talked about this. They talked about Aljamain Sterling as well. Al- Aljamain Sterling fighting O'Malley. Uh, prior to the fight, Aljamain says like he's not 100% sure if he's ready. But then they're putting all this marketing dollars into that fight. Dude, the, the more I watch it, mm-hmm. like Hunter's the guy. Yeah, that's what Hunter's a motherfucker. Yep. Like Mick Maynard's my boy. I love Mick. And I, I'm, Hunter wasn't there when I was fighting. The more I watch it, Hunter's, Hunter's the kind of the mastermind behind the scene. Like he's the guy that makes this thing this engine roll like Dana's the face of it and makes some important decisions and he's the one that got them to where they're at but you can tell hunter's like the guy yeah hunter's the man and he's a smart lawyer dude so smart as fuck too and you see him dealing with all this he seems like a pretty good dude exactly my tiki's my boy love tiki is a legit yeah. friend i will talk to all the time tiki's the fucking man hey tiki can you say something here though <laughs> <laughs> but i also like when 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 hunter campbell's like hey man so we set you up with um the o'malley fight 
and he has a massive fan base and we're hoping you can get some of his fans if you beat him and we're trying to set you up for success and you keep shooting yourself in the foot because mm. you accepted the fight and now you're painting this narrative that you're injured he, he's like so we don't get it and it was like it's from a business side it's good like hunter's like you're kind of fucking yourself dude like sell the fight mm -hmm. what's not helping us is you're saying oh i'm not ready i'm injured he's like dude, fuck all that dude like you agreed to the fight we have you on tape saying like yeah i'm down and as soon as you say you're down the first statement is oh they're forcing me into this you know i'm injured and he's like what are you doing sell the fight bro yeah and it, the, the reasoning is perfect he's like you know people they're going to be like if they want to buy tickets they're not sure you're going to fight so maybe we're not going to get a hotel no we're not going to buy tickets i'm with so hunter on this yeah. like don't take the fight then bro if if you're if you don't want it and the narrative is oh i'm injured i they forced me to do this like nobody wants to watch that we're putting a lot of money in this thing you also have a great opportunity here what the fuck are you doing and Is Hunter it, was really good at talking. He wasn't like, you know, Dana seems kind of like he could be really mean. But because the guy before that was a guy named Joe Silva. It's, yeah. You couldn't even sit in the same room like that. Like he was, his, A, he's this big. He's tiny and just had this massive ego and would just talk down to you. And you're like, what's happening, dude? My eight-year-old would beat the shit out of you. Why are you talking to me like this? And you, but you couldn't have this dialogue with him because everything was insulting, insulting, insulting. And like, again love dana there's no issue between us he was on flagrant and he, he there's been a sound bite going around where he's like fighters are the most paranoid people on earth they always think we're out to get them we're trying to get them to lose and i'm not saying dana did this but there, there's there's i mean especially in the the antitrust lawsuit this came out that's a real thing like you know he's like fighters are the most paranoid people in the world they're thinking you know we're setting them up to lose and I agree sometimes yeah that they're paranoid and they're overthinking it but also that happened like joe silva would do that mm -hmm. now i'm not saying they're doing it now but there's a history of that where they would set guys up to lose that's true so it's it's yeah there's some fighters are paranoid and stuff like that and if you get over the hump it does wonders for you but then also there's times where you know a fighter's difficult or a fighter's didn't want to renegotiate and he has one fight left and there's clear evidence in those antitrust lawsuit emails of Joe Silva being like, let's toss him this awful matchup, get him out of here. Like, yeah, you're setting him up to lose. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying Hunter's like that in any facet. I don't know how they work now. It doesn't seem that way. People like with the Dustin Poirier, same uh, Denise fight, right? Like, oh, they're setting Dustin up. And Dan's like, no, it's a great opportunity. Look what happened. Then you got a title shot. Th there's that too. But the narrative of that, the, that the UFC doesn't have a history of doing that, and when I say UFC, I'm saying Joe Silva. Oh, so, yeah. The old emails or whatever messages. Yeah, he's a bad dude. Um, he's also a product of his environment. Maybe he's a good guy. I don't know. But my dealings with him were atrocious. <laughs> and most fighters. He's just disappeared, huh? He's just gone now. All that money. Dude, when they, yeah, when they sold, you know, and they paid him whatever, all the money, I think he went back under his rock, you know, went under the bridge. <laughs> I'm a little bitch. Uh, you really don't like him, man. Ah, he's so mean to fighters, man. The way he would talk to people, he's like, bro, dude. If you were in this position, I could literally. <laughs> Did anyone like him out of the fighters that you knew? <laughs> no, I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> there might be some like I was always cool with him. Ah, shut up. <laughs> Take a little break. When I started podcasting, an online store was the furthest thing from my mind. When I launched this giveaway truck business, dude, it was a lot. And I was like, we need a store to deal with all the orders. Someone goes, you know who does that better than anybody? Shopify. I went, say less. So guess what? Now, Drive Fast All Gas is powered by Shopify. All right? They're the easiest to work with. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the, let's do a giveaway truck stage to, oh my God, we actually have merch stage to, did we just hit a million order stage? Fingers crossed. Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're auction, autograph apparel, selling skis, whatever you're doing, selling merch for a giveaway truck, Shopify got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. It's up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. So sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. 
All right. Plus, Shopify is extensive help resource. So they're to support your success every step of the way. I'm always on the horn with these guys because business that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash shop, all lowercase, S-C-H-A-B, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash shop, all lowercase now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash shop, all lowercase. Cha-ching. Oh, oh, O'Reilly Auto Parts. That's right. Love me some O'Reilly, and they are keeping your car on the road. O'Reilly is my one-stop shop. I had to get some caliber paint. I had to paint the pedals, my race pedals on the Lightning. And I went to O'Reilly, and dude, this dude, Casey, his name's Casey as well, helps me out at O'Reilly, shows me exactly what to get. He goes, dude, this has primer and the high bl uh, black gloss paint in it. You don't need just one primer. I said, say less, little dude. Thank you, man. They've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in-store or online, so you don't have to worry about if you're in a jam. All right? O'Reilly Auto Parts, they can test your battery, change it out for you. You got to check engine light, say less. They got you. They have ASE certified master technicians that verify they scan everything so your freaking car is back on the road. So whether you're a car aficionado or a rookie, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are super helpful. Best of all, friendly. Shout out to Casey. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts is your one-stop shop for all things auto. Do it yourself, and you can find what you need in-store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit them at O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop. O-O-O'Reilly. Let's get back to the program. All right. Uh, well, Masvidal and Diaz had another press conference. Diaz always leaves these. I think they hit two already so far, but so Diaz left this one, and then suddenly Masvidal and Diaz started like talking smack, and then they're their entourage just fought. Diaz kind of left. <laughs> and then he Mas left the fight too? He, no, he left. Yeah. He, so people, he, I saw him in the background. We can't show the YouTube video. He's just like looking around and then he just leaves as his team. And, <laughs> Damn, and Masvidal, yeah. Masvidal and his team started going at it. But since there's like someone's uh, camera footage, I'll show you a little bit. Chin. Of it. Yo. What do you, th do you think this is manufactured a little bit? I mean, they're th they're throwing real. Blows. I think people actually get beat up, but I think this needed something like this because we course. forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. everyone's talking about Connor, everyone's talking about Mike Tyson. Now everybody's talking about Logan Paul, Bradley Martin. Nobody talking about Nate versus Jorge. They had to change the date. They say, "Yo, we don't want to interfere with this." I don't know what's going on there, but there's just not a narrative there. I don't know how ticket sales are doing, but stuff like this helps. Yeah. Love me some Masvidal. <laughs> So the the long haired guys are part of Diaz's crew. And I see Mazda on the background there. Just more of the same of that kind of stuff. And then we won't show this on, on air, but I'll just show you. I want you to see what Diaz does here. Where's he at in this? I'll show you right now. You'll see him coming up in just a, right here. Mm -hmm. See him? He's walking around <laughs> as everything's going. He said, I'm out. Maybe he doesn't want to do it like lawsuit and whatever. I don't know. And the people are just asking him for pictures and stuff. I'll yeah. fast forward a little bit. Yeah, just kind of just walking away. Interesting. Yeah, because it, it didn't seem like it was a Diaz Mazdal thing. It seems like it was the team thing. But Mazdal is all up in it. That guy got jacked up. <laughs> Are you talking about the white guy with dreads? Yes. I don't know oh, if he's yeah. even white. He might be like an albino. Oh, uh, yeah. Interesting. And then later on, there's a girl that. That girl that looks pretty hot, that one of Diaz, he just like smiles at her and then he just walks off. Right here. Yeah, I see him. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so that makes sense if, because it's not making that much. Just to do it, gets right it back now? in the headlines. Yeah. Smart. Uh, and we already knew this, but Dana White admitted it. Yeah, but Schultz, I, I listened to the whole episode, it was mm -hmm. great. Because, you know, Schultz, he's not like balls deep in UFC. Mm -hmm. So for him to ask questions about Dana and all this stuff, it was great. Yeah. It was so much. Like a lot of, if you're balls deep in the fight game, you, you've heard a lot of this. But it was different. And Schultz, he's asked from a different perspective. Whole thing's over. They're about to wrap. He goes, oh, I forgot to ask you. The Howie Mandel thing, is that real? And then Dana's like, 
here's the thing. So he did that Sage uh, Steel interview. He's yeah. like, and it's all done at Howie's studios. And then Howie's like, dude, you should uh, sit down and walk off. Would you do that? And Dana's like, yeah. He's like, but take it to your grave. Yeah. And then Dana said he went to go do some like Nelk Boys, Nelk Boys thing. And the crowd was yelling, fuck Howie Mandel. Yeah. He's like, whoa, dude. No, no, no. He's a really good dude. Like, that's not what we want. So he told Howie, he's like, dude, I can't. I can't do this, man. I get to tell people like it's fake. Mm -hmm. So he put uh Hi Mandel's the fucking greatest dude ever. Agree with that. So he says, sorry, how it's just when I go out and people start shitting on the guy. I'm sure he could give a flying fuck. I couldn't do it. So Howie Mandel's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean we knew that though. Mm -hmm. I thought it was great too. Dana acknowledged too, you know, with like he's banned from you know, palms are banned from this. And Dan's like, what the fuck? He's like, no, there's no banning. They just lower your your uh, amount you can bet with to keep you away from there. They don't ban. You could still go play there. Like, I could go play there. They just don't give me a high reserve. He's like, nobody's banned. He's like, you only get banned if you're, like, doing illegal shit, like cheating. He's like, I'm not banned. I stole, like, not stole. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I, took, he's like I took him for, like, 15 mil. And they're like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. He's like, but I could go back. I can always go back there. But they just don't give me the high amount that i need to play with so i'll just go elsewhere he's like nobody's banned unless you're cheating yeah or you do some crazy shit there and get arrested yeah but then i cannot ban you because you win a ton of money you just can't play the high stakes ones anymore mm -hmm. um so i guess the wwe nxt was at the apex and it looks like this bro it looks like ufc old school like ufc at uh mcnichols like back in denver why? What? What? The UFC is just like nah, nah, too much of a hassle. No, no let four people in. <laughs> Isn't it wild? Yeah. Like the Apex looks really good there, and that'd be it. It'd be like going to see Kevin Hart or Bill Burr or Rogan at a small venue. You know, how dope that'd be for fans, and then charge more for those tickets because it's a, a intimate atmosphere, mm -hmm. and you can hear the commentary. That'd be sick, dude. UFC's like nah, we're good. It's interesting. I, 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 I just thought they didn't have the capabilities. I thought, like, no, maximum capacity is seven. Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. smaller. But then when they put all these. I know. They, you look like, at it, you're like, God damn, there's a runway for the wrestlers to <laughs> yeah. fucking fly down. There's the crowd and lights and shit. It looks legit. Why not? I think that'd be dope. If they can keep doing the Apex, like, put a little effort into it. But then also, UFC's like, why? You're like, okay, fair point. You know? Yeah. I also thought it was interesting on. Um, when Dana went on Schultz's show is he was talking about power slap and I get it. I, I get Dana's thing. Like the chips on his shoulder. Like when the UFC started, people were saying, Oh, this is bullshit. It's cockfight. It's never going to work. He goes, I'm getting the same thing with slap fighting. I think it's a tad different, but either way, he's like, I like to make things that people don't think are going to be successful, successful. And he's like slap fighting, which is a different thing, but still a thing. It's still a numerical number you can use. He goes, as far as views goes, it beats everything. And then I think Schultz, he was like, even more than like Real Madrid and like the Premier League teams, he's like, yes, even more than that. We have more followers than that. And I, in my head, I'm like, there's no way, dude. Like there's, there's, there's no, have you ever looked up like, real, like the Premier League team, like Real Madrid or Manchester? Go to like their Instagram. Type in Real Madrid. You have massive Real Madrid, and it's wild, dude. Real Madrid, like you're talking about different. 162 million followers, sir. Real Madrid has 162 million followers. Yeah, Dana did correct himself. Now hold on. Now go to slap fight. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, and again, someone asked me about this on Twitter. I said. I don't think I don't think Dana's that naive. Like he's a smart dude. I don't think he's like no guarantee we're bigger than Premier League. His thing is he messed up saying followers. It's I think on some things it gets more views. So Power Slap has three point nine million. I'm surprised Schultz's team and they're they're beasts. I'm surprised they're like uh, real quick Dana. I think you mean views, not followers. It's just take like we just did. This took two seconds. They probably didn't want to like you know. But why not correct? Be like, oh, no, Dana, be like, be like, more than Real Madrid. Even I'd be like, no. I'd be like, hey, Chin, look that up. And we got Schultz on Fighting the Kid for the 1,000th episode this Wednesday. Yeah. I'll bring it up. I'm going to ask him, like, why didn't you do it? He'll say probably say the same thing. Go down. 
if you click on like the views, like click on that black dude getting slapped in the face. The second one. So four million likes. That's a ton of views then. I don't know why they do on like desktops you can't see it, but on your phone you can see how many views. Yeah, so view wise it's crushing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, not not bigger than uh Real Madrid. Real Madrid. But again, I think Dana has a team and someone I don't think it's even his team was like we have more followers than even Real Madrid. I think they're like our videos do better on average than Real Madrid's. And maybe he just got confused with the followers. He's also 50-something. Like, talk to my dad about views and followers. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, same thing. This yeah, that's video all right here, by the way, has 211.9 million views. This episode of The Shop Show is brought to you by the world's first alcohol detoxifier that reduces blood alcohol content as little as 30 minutes. That's a real thing. That product is out there. It's called Safety Shot. So when Connor was resisting that beer, I want to say, hey, son, go ahead and have a few sips of it. You want know have a few full bears and then drink a safety shot. You're ready for training the next morning. Or if you want to drive home, we got you, son. All right? Safety shot isn't just detoxifying and reduces your blood alcohol in little as 30 minutes. It gives you a sharper mind and body. It gives you liver support, well-being boost, gut support, hydration. If you're drinking, you're definitely getting dehydrated. We got you. So whether you're at that party or you're watching the big UFC 302, 303, whatever big paper you're watching, have that drink. Drink a safety shot. Wake up feeling refreshed. Take your kid to Little League so you don't look like a bum. We got you, man. You have energy. You can be feeling good. Just go to drinksafetyshot.com. Get you a four-pack right now. All right? Use code BRENDAN to get 10% off. That's drinksafetyshot.com. Or go to any, any BevMo, Bevmo and get you a four-pack. That's where I get them. That's where you get them? Hell yeah. Or you get online, go to drinksafeshot.com. Promo code is Brendan. Get 10% off. Drink on. <laughs> so 2 million views? 211. 211 million views. That's a ton of views. So it's just over 2 million. No, 200. Oh, 200. Oh, 200 million. Yeah, yeah 200 Holy million. shit. This other thing is like, this is built for social media. Like, whether, I mean, slapping's hilarious to watch. So people are going to let's look at this dude get slapped, you know? Mm-hmm. And they'll monetize it. Like, it's a beast. I would like to go to one. I think you just have to, the, the issue is is they market it on the UFC's platform. That was the biggest one. That, that was the biggest issue. People mm-hmm. are like, what are we doing? But if it's just a separate thing, like Dana's bull riding or the Nitro Circus, Nitro Cross stuff, and he owns all of ridiculousness, like, you don't see that market on UFC. So I think if it's just a completely separate thing, it, it would have been consumed better as far as the fan base goes. Yeah. But when you conflict through, you're like, look, it's the same type of people. It's like, no, it's, it's, diff- it's different. That's all it is. I think it's dope what he's doing. Is you, you just don't want to confuse power slap. You don't want to confuse them as athletes compared to the UFC. <laughs> That's where it gets weird. <laughs> yes. You know? And the whole drug testing thing is also... What are we doing? Let yeah. them do all the drugs. Give them meth, for God's sakes. Yeah. It's more entertaining. Is that it, dude? I think that's it, man. All right, kids. Big week. Gearing up for the 1,000th episode of Fighter and the Kid. We have so many guests you guys all know and love. I'm sure we'll announce some of it on Fighter and the Kid uh, that I'm doing right after this. The giveaway truck is damn near done. I can't wait for you guys to see it done. It's been so fun. So stressful as well. Get it all locked in with the merch, with the website. Uh, I, I can't wait for it. Complete rebranding of Toontown, everything. It's been all we've been focused on. Uh, that's the reason we haven't posted any episodes. We have a bunch in the chamber. We're shooting a ton of content because once this thing launches, oh, we launching, baby. This truck is so goddamn dope. One of one, custom. It's an F-150 Roush uh, pre-runner. It shits on any Raptor R, regular Raptor, any truck you can think of. This thing is a complete savage, and it's going to be somebody's. Hopefully, they appreciate it and use it for what it's actually meant to be used for. So I can't wait. Stay tuned. Uh, Fight Companion on JRE is June 22nd. That is next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, but next Saturday. That's for the card on ABC. It's at 12 Pacific time, 2 uh, Texas time, whether it be Central time. Yeah, Whitaker, Hamzat, uh, Sergey Volkov, Johnny Walker, Ozdemir, 
Gaslam, Rodriguez, that's a great fight. You got Nick Davis fighting. <laughs> Magomedov, right. a.k.a. Nick Davis. Uh, that fight's so tasty. That whole card's tasty. But I can't wait, man. Busy week. Stay tuned. Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everything. And we'll see you next time.